Hey guys, sup, 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 Ryu here for the Yu Gi Oh! Council. Welcome to Guide to Your Side for Ying Zing. Now hold the phone, Ryu. Back in April of, I think, this year or last year, you did the Guide to Your Side on Ying Zing. Why are you doing it now? Well, first of all, that quality was ass compared to what I do now. And secondly, because there is new stuff we can use. And thirdly, because it's more relevant to make a newer video that's better quality and overall a better product to produce for you guys. And because I believe Yang Zing are a sleeper deck as I talked in yesterday's top 10 countdown. Yeah, you can go check that out uh, in the videos. If you go on my channel, it should pop up. It's fairly recent. Um, Yang Zing are pretty much a sleeper deck. And I think with Metaphos, you're going to see them a little bit more. So I wanted to really go back into the vault of Guide to Your Sides and remaster it with better audio quality and better visual editing skills because honestly that new monitor I just installed on my computer ooh, makes it so much better but that's that's enough said we'll talk more about that tomorrow on uh, the update at the very end of coffee time but tonight let's talk about sighting for Ying Zing. Ying Zing are a deck that focuses on monsters while also focusing on really heavy back row. The heavy back row protects the monsters and they can use cards like Skill Drain and get over it because they're a Synchro heavy deck, but when they Synchro out, there's certain monsters that make them immune to trap cards or make the Synchro immune to spell cards or even just eliminating you from being able to use attributes of certain monsters. So I'm gonna focus on every key aspect to Ying Zings and how to approach the deck and side against it. And then, of course, I'll show my own Ying Zing deck upcoming soon enough. So I'll post that on the channel when I can, uh, when I'm done finishing, like, fine-tuning it for this format prior to the next set. So with that all said, let's get into this. So the first card I want to mention is Royal Decree. Now, they are a Synchro deck, but they don't function like Synchrons when you go super, you know, hyper combo and have to worry about back row. These are guys who float. They die, next one comes out. But if you take out their trap cards that stop you from playing the game and protect their synchros because they're pretty much putting a giant investment into it, you're not going to have to worry about it. Now, I don't recommend Decree for every single deck to go against Ying Zing. I recommend Royal Decree for decks like Blue Eyes that can use it across the board and also make use of it in this matchup. Not every single Ying Zing player will play super heavy back row. You have to remember the Metal Foe version will be pretty popular. The Royal Decree works pretty damn well even against that version. Macros Cosmos. Focus on banishing them out so they cannot utilize their graveyard effects. Abyss Dweller also works and we'll probably get to that in a second. But Macros Cosmos just says, nope, you're not hitting the graveyard, you're getting banished instead. Obviously, I just mentioned it, Abyss Dweller, if you're a Mermel player or just a person who can make it Dino Miss, really fun bad, uh, budget deck, not bad, just a good budget deck. Uh, that can make use of Abyss Dweller against th this deck. It just shuts them down for that turn. But keep in mind that they have really good follow-up play, so you want to be at the ready. Twin Twister, just like Royal Decree, you want to focus on that back row. You want to take it out. They can use Skill Drain against you. Yes, it's a limited card, but still, you want to be at the ready for everything they could throw at you. They can also utilize Lose One Turn, so that way, you know, they can slow you down. Now, I don't recommend using Lose One Turn in Ying Zings, but some people like it. So, I'll mention it for that reason, too. Some people also like supp uh, Supply Squad in the deck, so... You want to take out these key cards. Now, if we're talking about the Metal Foe version, of course, Twin Twister again hits the Pendulum Scales. They can't pop their Ying Zing. It immediately says, slow the fuck down and let's take it slow. We're just getting to know each other. My next card I want to talk about is Utopia the Lightning. Obvious as day why this card works. Because it doesn't allow anything to activate during the battle phase as Utopia Lightning is attacking until the end of damage step. Meaning that Ying Zing, in short, won't get their effects. So pretty self-explanatory works in the same way that, you know, you're not going to get a floater's effect off your Toby to Lightning. D-Fissure, I'm not even going to go in-depth about this because it's like Macros Cosmos. It's just another version, and it's a spell card, so it's a little bit faster. So there's that. Different Dimension Ground, just like Macro, but only usable for the one turn. So in that turn, you're going to have to make the best play of it. But if you find it more useful than anything else... Then go for it, by all means. I'm not going to tell you not to. 
Different Dimension Ground is an option that you can run. It's just not the most favorable option. Then we have Armades, because I'm not going to leave out Synchro players and say, guess what, <laughs> Utopia the Lightning. Not every deck can make Utopia the Lightning, and not every deck can make Armades, since we're going through all these different, you know, cards that you can with various decks. But Armades is great, because you can just smack a Ying Zing in the face, and they can't do nothing about it. You just got to be very, very careful that their follow-up player... Uh, Follow-up play isn't Zhao to discard two Ying Zings and make a Boxia. Because you want to have that next card, Effect Railer, at the ready for that. If you see the Darkness of the Ying Zing come out on the board in attack mode by itself, and the only card on the board, and your opponent declares, I'm discarding two to activate Effect, that's what you want to Effect Railer. Because you can Effect Railer Boxia, which is great and everything, but Jout 2 is probably the most minus you can make the deck go if you Effect Villar it. So it's my favorite option to do that to. Effect Villar, though, regardless, works great around the whole Synchro this, Synchro that deck. So, works out great. Winter Cherries, uh, mainly to focus on Boxia because it's one of the most important uh, Synchros. I would say Exceeds, it's not an Exceed review, it's a Synchro. It's one of the most important Synchros in that entire deck. So being able to rip it out, and it's always usually played in twos is going to create a huge loss but keep in mind keep in mind they also run bls they can run crystal wing they can run all sorts of fun shit so you gotta know you you gotta get an idea of what people are playing ying zing and then see what works for you if that card works for you but i know winter cherries has a lot of steam going forward in the right direction for the right reasons uh, chain disappearance hit the tuners it can be devastating to a ying zing player because you're permanently banishing them out, and if they can't get those banished cards back, GG then, uh, pretty much. Then we have Vanity's Emptiness, because any time you can lock them out from special summoning, is instantly going to win you the game. And that also goes hand in hand with Vanity's Fiend. And if you're a Monarch player or someone who can just make use of Tribune, your special summon monster, you know every turn you're going to have that free special summon, go for the Vanity's Fiend, lock out the deck, swing, swing, swing put a decree there they're not going to be able to special they're not going to have any traps that slows down the deck and they're one main out that 90 percent i would say 90 percent of Yang zing players would probably have in their deck is going to be right back or dark hole dark hole is also something they play so that's you, the, that's only three cards you really have to worry about but you're slowing them down you're allowing yourself time to really draw in some more outs against the deck so i love vanity's fiend for that reason Majesty's Fiend shut off their monster effects, and so the whole graveyard float is not going to happen. It's not going to be a thing. That's instantly winning you the game in a nutshell real quick, just like Vanity's Fiend. Banisher of the Radiance, can't talk highly enough about this card. The only downside is that 1600 and the Fire of the Yang Zing has 1900, can easily jump over this. But it is another option if you could protect it, or if you have something like Silver Red Calcos or Moon Mirror Shield, those cards combo great with it because they'll have a harder time jumping over that Banisher of the Radiance. Uh, Fossil Dime, the same thing as Banisher, if you can power pump it, protect it, whatever the case is, you're going to make a life living hell for that deck because they only have so many monsters to jump over your Fossil Dino or your Banisher. And they're going to have to utilize the Dark Hole, the Torrental Tribute, those self-destructing cards, you know, destroy this, destroy that, to get over it. And I know Stardust seems like a great option. It is an okay option. But the problem is the deck can really jump around it pretty easily by making a Trish or making a Boxia. Whatever the case is to jump over it that they want to do, they can do. Soul Drain. It's limited still. I think it's still limited. I'm pretty sure this is the one limited. Mind Drain's unlimited. I may be incorrect. But Soul Drain is an amazing card because it will literally stop them from accessing their graveyard effects. That shuts them down hard. Fairy Wind for all their continuous spells and traps. Just poop on them. Uh, if you need a Synchro option to like go into a Synchro and use against them, Trishulia is great because you're going to be able to banish out a card from the hand, the grave, and the field. Two of those are actually more crucial than anything. And finally, End of Anubis, which is a tribute monster. You can actually ghoul this guy, but any effect that would activate in the graveyard, whether it be spell trap or monster, is going to be nullified. So he's another great option to use against the deck. That's all the different options I 
basically dug up for for guy to uh, for this guy to your side. If I left anything out for Ying Zing and you guys know about it and you think it should have been on here, then make sure to let us all know in the comments section. Guys, if there's a deck that you're still having trouble with and I haven't done a guide to your side, please let me know so that way next week I can do another guide to your side and it may be that, maybe Metal Foes, whatever it is. I like to go over the top decks and I like to go over decks that you're having trouble with so this way you guys can have a better overall experience for Yu-Gi-Oh! That is the truth. I'm Ryu for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. I'll see you guys tomorrow for coffee time. I'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in as always. Till then, peace and good night.